So guys, Eric Adams is very known for not liking rats. New York City has a lot of them. I used to live in Washington, DC, and rats look like baby tigers running around the street. Huge, I mean, big claws, big teeth and everything. So Eric Adams doesn't like rats. Everyone that knows me, they know one thing, I hate rats. You know, when we started killing them in Borough Hall, you know, some of the same folks are criticizing us now and called me a murderer because I was killing rats. Well, you know what? We're going to kill rats. Uh, today, we are announcing a once in a generation change that would have a real impact on the cleanliness, cleanliness of our city. We are drastically reducing the amount of time that garbage will remain on our curb. We're shifting the time where people can sit, sit, set out black bags and trash from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. This will reduce the amount of time the trash is on the street before collection, keeping our streets cleaner for a longer period of time and discouraging rodents uh, from running uh, their own version of what we like to say open restaurants. That's important because Eric Adams loves migrants. And migrants are putting a big strain on the city of New York. But they can't get jobs. Eric Adams wants them to have jobs, but they can't get jobs. So with a lot of them getting kicked out of homeless shelters and things like that, and it's hard. So how are they gonna make a living? A living, a living. Well, when you're homeless, you gotta look for diamonds in the rough. What's the best way to look for diamonds in the rough? Hmm, in the trash. Now, many of us have never been homeless, but we have looked for some of you can, some of you look for bottles. If you used to collect that in the recycling centers, because you used to get money for cans and bottles, right? I used to get money when I was a kid, so I would go and sometimes, you know, in my own trash, I would go and look for things like that and just see what was there. And sometimes you might find you misplace some money in trash, you throw some things away, you throw some things that you might be able to eat in the trash. You might not realize that because you're not homeless, but when you're homeless, you're probably gonna look for things in the trash because people throw things away. They throw clothes away, they throw valuables away. Like the saying goes, one man's trash is um, another man's treasure, right? So they go and they find the trash in Harlem, in East Harlem, because a lot of them are waiting for the trash to come. But there's one problem once they find this trash. People in East Harlem say bottle collectors are turning the neighborhood into an eyesore and a health hazard. They tell CBS 2's Lisa Rosner the collectors are digging through their garbage and leaving behind a mess. Bags of bottles and cans piled high on First Avenue and 102nd Street. Morning, noon and night. Three and four times a day. People who live in NYCHA's East River houses say since this spring, every day, anywhere from one to three trucks park there to collect recyclables and take up a bus lane. It's a mess because when you try to walk down the street, it's so cluttered. It smells terrible. There's garbage on the floor. Like, nobody picking it up. They'll sleep right here with bottles. Because they want to be the first on line. People whose units face the street say it is even worse for them. They're idle. So you have this exhaust going, and you hear the trucks, and you hear the exchange of, of the bottles, and the clinking, the clanking. They have to switch bags from black bags to clear bags, so they basically dump all the garbage that they picked up. And you know, we're trying to, you know, reduce the rat population. They say what's left behind is broken glass, bottle caps, and litter. We made multiple attempts to reach the owners of the truck companies, but residents believe the people coming to them with collections are mostly asylum seekers staying at the Randall's Island tent shelter. It's difficult. I mean, they go through those bags to try to make their little income. You know, it's, it's, it's a catch-22. If we're going to provide homes to these people, we need to actually house them. Residents say multiple 311 complaints to the Department of Sanitation are closed without action. A spokesperson for the agency told us it's investigating and takes this very seriously. How come they don't move them down to the mayor's office? The NYPD says the 23rd Precinct is aware of the trucks, and when officers respond, the trucks have either left or comply with officers' directions to leave. A rep says they'll continue to monitor. In East Harlem, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2. But that isn't the only issue. In hotels where migrants were staying, this same thing was happening. A hotel where Carlos Aralano used to work. Carlos joins me now. You tell me, 
How do hotels make money from these migrants? Tell me. Well, they charge, they charge the city, the taxpayer, they charge them double. You know, people think you're just paying for the room, but you're paying for the staff members. You walk into one of these hotels, and depending on how far you get, you can see a table of 10 staff members. But out of those 10 staff members, only two of them are really working. And the other eight that are there, they're just hanging around, not doing the thing. And when I used to work there, I used to say, why do I need 10 people when I have two people only working? I need to get rid of some of these people. And the excuse was always the contract requires this many people. And it requires that many people, 10 of them, because they want to charge the city more from the taxpayer funds. So they they upcharge anything they can. You know, if they say, oh, we're going to offer them uh, homeschool teachers for the migrants who don't want to go send their kids to public school, the hotel's going to charge it to the city twice as much. So they find any little excuse to charge more money inside. What's the condition of these hotels now from the inside? How are they being, I hate to say trash, but are they in good condition or not? Oh, no, they're ruined. They're never going to be what they once were. Uh, and that's why they're, they, they keep renewing the contracts because they don't want anyone to go in there and see what what uh, damage they've done to this place long term. Uh, every every other week, there was power out outages at the row on the floor 23. So I used to get go to work and they would say, you have five floors without electricity, go figure it out. And we would be without electricity because it would be five floors of illegal uh, migrants wanting to plug in air fryers into their rooms. So can you and you just do the math, you know, five floors worth of people. There's 5,000 people in this hotel spread across 28 floors. You have five floors trying to plug in air fryers. It's going to short circuit the electrical wires. And there's 135 hotels in New York City which house migrants. So the lady made a comment, if you remember, in this video. She talked about the trash brings rats. And, you know, we're trying to, you know, reduce the rat population. So Eric Adams was trying to stop the progression of rat infestation in New York City, not understanding that the migrants coming into New York City was going to help rats even come out more because, well, not only homeless people like trash, but so do rats. It's the number one place that they hang out in trash dumpsters because they're also looking for food and the same things that homeless people are looking for. So when you take that trash out and you open up those trash bins, it probably opens up a lot of rats that are coming out into the city and then they're coming into people's houses and dilapidated buildings. And then, you know, now you have rats everywhere. I can't believe this, this is interesting. This is exactly what is happening with the migrant crisis. And again, Joe Biden is trying to act as if he didn't have anything to do with it. But you know, in New York City, everybody lives close together, right? So why would you want to be able to have another four years of things like this happening using tax dollars only to mess up the trash system and the waste collection system and put more strains on that resource? The city already doesn't have any money for education. The city already has problems with infrastructure. The city has so many problems with overcrowding as it is already. Now we have a bigger problem because migrants are out there not only committing crimes, they're putting trash back on the streets and they're not fixing the trash once they do it, they just leave it there. And trash also stinks. Like, do you not know that trash smells bad? Yeah, it smells bad. So then you put that odor out. So imagine you're walking out, trying to get a breath, a breath of fr fresh air, and then you just smell a whole bunch of diaper doo-doo just everywhere. You know, you're trying to have your coffee, trying to enjoy your walk to work, and you know, you're trying to avoid getting mugged, or if you're a woman, you know, in New York City, random guys are hitting ladies in the face, and then you get to enjoy that nice smell of doo-doo, and you know, while you're paying your overpriced rent in Harlem or in Manhattan somewhere, $5,000 a month for a zero bed, zero bathroom, literally you open the door, you're in the backyard. It's gonna cause people to leave New York City. That's what's gonna happen. A lot of people are gonna leave New York City. Guess what? They're gonna go to Texas. Republican state. Makes sense, right? Texas. You get more land, you get more of a house. You know, the state is ran better. 
don't have to deal with these issues anymore. And unfortunately for New York City, it's gonna come to an end pretty soon. Those liberal policies, and I know you wanna help somebody and all of that, but you can't help, you can't even help yourself. You can't even help the section eight citizens. It's been like 10 or 15 years since New York City has opened up the section eight list. And now they're finally gonna do it again. All that trash out there. And that money could have been spent with section eight in New York City for people who actually work and pay taxes. So guys, what do you think it should well, Shitty Jackson? Another episode of Fair Use here on Kenyana. I'm out.